Social services in the UK cut open a pregnant woman's stomach to remove her baby against her will. The Italian woman was visiting Britain last year to attend a work seminar when she suffered a panic attack after failing to take medication for bipolar disorder. Despite the woman's mother explaining her daughter's condition to police over the phone from Italy, she was taken to a psychiatric hospital and sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Five weeks later, while she was still being held against her will, Essex Social Services obtained a secretive court order for the birth to be enforced by a C-section. Social Services never consulted her family or authorities in her own country. This woman was forcibly sedated while the state forced a surgery on her against her will to remove her child from her womb. The Essex Social Services refuses to return the child, telling the court that the woman is likely to relapse, and they insist the child be adopted. And they're not even considering adopting the child out to the mother's family or to a family in the mother's home country of Italy. The case has provoked a wave of anger from MPs and patient pressure groups. It's being condemned as extraordinary and totalitarian, with one MP describing social workers as dictators who are unaccountable and out of control. Children's services in the UK operate in great secrecy and unaccountability thanks to the Court of Protection. It was introduced in 2007 by the Mental Capacity Act, and it can force people to stay in care homes or hospitals. And judges have the power to make life or death rulings about withdrawing treatment. Since 2007, the court has operated in almost total secrecy. Earlier this year, the Daily Mail exposed the case of Wanda Maddox, who was secretly imprisoned for five months just for repeatedly trying to release her father from a care home. The totalitarianism of the social services is not unique to the UK. Here in the police state of America, parents are also being threatened with child welfare agencies if they refuse to comply with school demands. These two letters were sent to parents warning them they'd be reported to CPS for failing to make dental visits every six months. The law states that the health certificates can only be signed by medical staff who have been authorized by the state. So what does that mean for parents who might be anti-vaccine or who refuse to treat their children's teeth with toxic fluoride? The government has usurped the role of parent away from actual parents. Some schools won't allow lunches to be sent from home unless they're accompanied by a doctor's note, while another school fined this parent $10 because her healthy home-packed lunch didn't meet food guide requirements, which apparently include GMO and high-fructose-laden crackers. And what about this Tennessee father who was arrested for picking up his children from school on foot rather than by a vehicle? He was arrested based on school policy and not a law. We've heard about the family in California who had to fight to get their child back from Child Protective Services after they dared to go for a second opinion. And then, of course, this Amish family who went into hiding in order to keep their daughter from forced chemotherapy, even though tests have shown that her cancer is gone. What this all boils down to is just training you to understand that the state owns your children. And there won't be any negative consequences for you if you just transfer the authority of your children over to the government. And the federally mandated maternal infant and early childhood home visiting program that's rolled into Obamacare means that the state will perform home inspections at any time to ensure that you're complying with their version of health care. I'm Leanne McAdoo reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News.